G'day, it's Cliff again, doing another video on Rapid Turn. Um, just setting it up now, um, doing a few checks on seeing how accurate the certificate of inspection is. And it's raining on the roof, Saturday morning. Um, good way to spend an hour or so. So, uh, see how we go. Okay, so let's drill down a bit deeper now and look at the accuracy of uh, the Tormac Rapid Turn. So here's the certificate of inspection and the inspection director Mayo Kuyang and the inspector Kuyang Nin and the Tormac representative Xiao Yong in uh, June 2016. So for example, um, the axial play of the spindle is uh, allowed to be 3 hundredths and uh, measurement claim is 1 micron uh, run out on the OD is allowed to be 3 hundredths and the measurement claim is 1 micron the run out of the ID taper in the spindle this is obviously a critical one it's allowed to be 1 hundredth and its um, measurement claim is 1 micron so it's 1 tenth run out 10 millimeters from the spindle nose is allowed to be a hundredth and the actual measurements one micron and uh, six inches out or 160 millimeters out is allowed to be four hundredths and it's um, measured at five microns and the spindle parallelism relative to the surface plate is allowed to be 0.1 over six inches 150 millimeters and it's uh, measured at one micron so um, the uh, key accuracy motion while locked is allowed to be six hundredths play there at that diameter and they've got six microns so some of those most of those uh, errors are about one tenth of the allowed amount so I should do some checks now and see whether they really are because that is remarkably good okay well let's measure radial run out of the uh, 5c internal taper it's allowed to be uh, as much as one hundredth of a millimeter and um, let's see what we're getting. getting you should be getting a gloss on the uh, dial indicator uh, I think but okay it's showing it now that is a tiny amount that is one or two microns that's that's really good that's um, a tenth or maybe a fifth of the allowable error and this this isn't uh, a particularly precision setup there's probably a little bit of um, indicator uh, holder flex so it probably is only a micron that's one tenth of the allowable error that's showing that they're working to pretty good tolerances here I'm really pleased about that one minor issue is the uh, mounting screw uh, mounting uh, bolt there is too close to the legs of the headstock you can't actually get a uh, ring spanner in there and even an open spanner you can't turn it um, a sixth of a turn so uh, I'm sure that wasn't a mistake made by the designers it's probably a communication error with the factory maybe with the CAD model or the dimensions or something um, I'm sure they'll get that right with the next run it just needs to be um, a few more millimeters to the left so that you can get a spanner in there I can get around it by just using a smaller bolt and a smaller nut with a big washer under it so it's not a biggie okay just checking run out of the spindle OD not that that's actually critical in its application but it gives an indication of um, their accuracy of the cylindrical grinding of the spindle um, I suppose um, the allowed amount is a maximum of three hundredths and they're claiming one micron now that's a bit strange because um, it's running out how much of that is indicator stand flex no, it's running out about 8 microns. Hmm, well, that's strange. They're claiming 1 micron. Why would they write 1 micron when it's 8 microns? Um, I don't know about that. It seems unnecessary 
Um, but that wouldn't change, that's just the run out of the bearings. Oh, maybe a, maybe it would vary slightly in shipping with the distrib distribution of the grease in the bearings or something, I don't know. Anyway, um, it's it's still okay, but it's just different from, from their uh, actual measured amount. So it always makes you lose confidence in the inspector a little bit. Um, I, I mentioned in my last video I was really worried about the fact that the aluminium is, spans a lot more than the uh, spindle being in steel, um, the aluminium headstock. I'm not so worried about that now. Um, I ran it for a little while yesterday at a reasonable speed and um, what seemed to be happening is that the spindle was hotter than the headstock housing. Because the headstock housing is aluminium, I suppose it's it's shedding its heat more rapidly on the outside, and the spindle on the inside is is um, having its heat trapped more, and it's felt at a higher temperature. So in a way, the difference in thermal expansion um, could work to its advantage because you are having a cooler um, headstock and a, and a warmer spindle. Um, so the difference um, of a low coefficient of expansion of the steel compared with the aluminium um, could actually be an advantage in keeping the distance between the bearings more similar rather than more different. So early signs are good and I'm not so worried about that aspect of it now but I, I will keep an eye on it. So as you can see I'm midway through setting it up. Um, one of the things that really appeals to me about a CNC is that it can run automatically while you're doing something else. So I want to find ways to set this up as automatically as possible. Um, obviously on a mill that's turned into a lathe, we have a spare axis, the Y-axis, uh, and I'm hoping to use that um, for tool changing. So I can have a gang tooling plate, perhaps sit like this, and perhaps another one sit vertically like this that can take drills, sit back a bit, so that we can have different uh, X positions in the lathe format or Z in the mill. Um, and then uh, I could possibly use my uh, existing quick change tool post tool holders that I've got on my little manual lathe. I've got a whole bunch of these and buy another tool block for it and mount that there and have that set up uh, somewhere there so that I could also use my quick change tool holders. So I'm just looking at all those different options of how I can mount it and um, how the different gang tooling positions will give the best clearance. Um, so if you've got any thoughts or comments or warnings um, on that, I'd be most welcome. I'm going to have to shift the coolant possibly to this side and um, yeah, I'm just going to mull it over for a few days because uh, I want to get the best format I can for it. So I'm just looking at improving the capacity of this little uh, four inch chuck. Um, I've got about four millimeters of uh, pinion bearing penetration into that inner uh, section there. Uh, actually five, five millimeters, sorry, about five millimeters of penetration and that section is nine millimeters. So I could bore four millimeters out of the ID, um, uh, four millimeters out of the IR, that's uh, eight millimeters out of the ID. So it would go up from 22 to uh, 30 millimeters. That's quite a big boost in capacity. That would be really handy for me anyway. I, may have, I would have to reposition those threaded holes if I went that, to that maximum amount, but it's probably worth doing.